नमस्ते बेटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बेटिया अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल माई सेल्फ जे वी एन डॉक्टर रवि जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन इन फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस एट ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी चैप्टर इन दिस सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस जेनेटिक फैक्टर्स एंड द जेनेटिक डिजीज और द डिजीज दैट आर रिलेटेड टू द जेनेटिक एबनॉमिलिटीज so uh, what are genes genes are basically something that determines our well being our our nature our uh, phenotype our genotype everything is controlled by our genes genes is not only responsible for who we are but is also responsible for the various diseases that are developing in the uh, body of our individual so today we are going to learn a little bit about the uh, genetic factors and in the upcoming uh, lectures we are going to learn about the various genetic diseases about genes you have been uh, studying since your uh, 10th or 11th standard so this is not a new topic for you uh, you have already learned what is cell division what are the different type of cell divisions what is mitosis what is meiosis all these things you have already learned in your previous classes so today's lecture will be just a review of all those things that you have already studied this will not be anything new for you today but uh, this uh, revision is essential in order to make a sound base for the upcoming lectures so we are going to discuss about some of the you know, genetic factors and uh, then you can understand about all these uh, genetic factors because in exam many times uh, sometimes or in uh, most of the examination a few short notes have been given related to the genetic diseases so genetic factors is important uh, but only uh, for the standpoint of a short note so let us start with the genetic factors what are genetic factors and uh, today it will be just a review a very small review of uh, what are the different genes and how the cell division takes place and something that you have already studied so let's start with the genetic diseases so what are genes genes are something uh, or these are the basic functional units so genes are the functional units that are that are encoded in the double stranded dna uh, the full form of dna is deoxyribonucleic acid so genes are basically the functional units that are encoded in the double stranded deoxyribonucleic acid and these are packaged as chromosomes and located in the nucleus of the cell so what are genes genes are basically the functional units and uh, these are encoded in the uh, double stranded dna and this is packed as a chromosomes and located in the nucleus of the cell so genes are basically located in the nucleus of the cell now um, i would suggest you to recall the structure of the cell the structure of the dna so by recalling that particular thing you can easily understand where the genes are located you can just recall this uh, structure of the dna uh, if you don't recall it now then you have to go through your books the previous year books uh, and in that way it will be very easy for you to understand all those things all right so genes are basically the fundamental elements on the chromosome so genes what are genes these are basically the fundamental elements fundamental elements on the chromosomes that are capable of transmitting information so genes contains the information information about you about your everything and these are the fundamental elements these are located on on the chromosome and these are capable of transmitting the information so genes are the functional elements on the chromosome and these are capable of transmitting information from the dna template via the production of messenger ribonucleic acid that is mrna to the production of proteins so genes are basically the functional elements of the chromosome that are capable of transmitting information from the dna template via the production of messenger ribonucleic acid mrna to the production of proteins so genes are responsible for the production of protein they will uh, carry information about what kind of protein has to be made and what sh should be its structure what should be its character every information is encoded in the gene that is located on the chromosome 
Now, the gene activity or expression is influenced by a number of factors. So gene does not act on its own, but there are a lot of factors that are responsible for the action of the gene. So its action, its expression is influenced by a number of <clears throat> complex interacting factors, which includes the accessibility of the gene promoted to transcription factors. So the transcription of the gene, it is done and it is based on the number of factors. So the genetic activity, its expression, and these are influenced by a lot of factors, many factors. Now, how does the cell division takes place? To understand the gen uh, genes we, uh, that, that are located on the chromosome, we must first of all recall the cell division because during the cell divisions, the chromosomes are divided and hence the transmission of gene takes place. So there are uh, two types of cell division that you can see in the individuals or the living beings. One is the mitosis and the other one is the meiosis. So what is mitosis? Mitosis is the cell division uh, that results into the uh, multiplication of two identical cells. That is, if a cell is deployed, then again, deployed cell is, uh, deployed daughter cells are formed. So from one cell, two identical uh, cells are formed and the number of chromosome does not change. What is meiosis? Meiosis results into the four haploid daughter cells. So in meiosis, the number of chromosome will reduce to half. So mitosis, it is resulting in two diploid daughter cells, whereas in meiosis, it will result into four haploid daughter cells. Now, what are the stages of cell division? There are uh, different cell divisions, but there are certain uh, steps prior to the cell division that is common to both mitosis and meiosis. So in these stages of cell division, the cells not committed to mitosis are said to be in G0 phase. So we have different stages. Let me recall you the different stages, G0, then G1, S, G2, and M. M can be mitosis and can be meiosis. But other than all, uh, G, G0, G1, S, G2, M, these phase remains common for both mitosis and meiosis. Now, those cells who are not this time to be divided are uh, to be considered in the G0 phase. Now, the cells committed to mitosis must go through the preparatory phase of interphase. So there will be uh, the stage known as interphase. Uh, it will consist of G1, S and G2. So I believe you all remember all these things, but this is just a revision in order to understand how the genes are dividing, how the chromosomes are dividing and ultimately the, the genes are dividing. So what happens in the G1 phase, it is the first gap, gap, synthesis of the cellular components that are necessary to complete this cell division are <clears throat> formed. So in the G1 phase, there is synthesis of the cellular component that are necessary to complete the uh, cell division. Next phase is the S phase, S or the synthesis phase. In this, the DNA replicates producing identical copies. So in the S phase, there is DNA replication that is producing its own identical copies from each chromosome. And these are known as the sister chromatids. So what was happening in the G1 phase? In the first gap phase, there was synthesis of the cellular components. So in the G1 phase, only the cellular components are formed that are necessary for the cell division. In the S phase, synthesis phase, the DNA replication is there that is producing identical copies of each chromosome that is called as the sister chromatids. And in the G2 phase, that is known as the second gap, the repair of any errors in the replicated DNA takes place before starting the mitosis. So before entering the cell division, if there is any uh, abnormality in the DNA, then it is uh, corrected during the G2 phase, that is the second gap phase. Now there are uh, four stages in the mi mitosis that, has, uh, that are known as prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. This you already know. Let me have a quick review of four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase in the mitosis. You must remember that in the mitosis, identical number of chromosomes from one cell, two identical number of cells are formed. Whereas in meiosis, from one cell, four haploid, from a diploid one cell, four haploid cells are formed. So in the mitosis, we have prophase, we have uh, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. 
in the prophase, the chromosome condense and become visible. So what is happening in the prophase, the chromosomes are getting condensed and these are becoming visible. The centrioles move to the opposite ends. So the centrioles in the cells are moving to the opposite ends. The <coughs> chromosomes are getting condensed and they are uh, becoming visible. The centrioles are moving in the opposite end of the cell and the nuclear membrane is disappearing. Second phase is the metaphase. What is happening in the metaphase? The centrioles complete their migration to the opposite end. So in the metaphase, the migration of the uh, centrioles to the opposite end is complete and the cells and the chromosome consist of the two identical sister chromatids. So there are two identical sister chromatids that line up at the equator of the cell. So the uh, centromeres are moving at the opposite ends and uh, the chromosomes consisting of two identical sister chromatids are lining at the equator of the cells. Then comes the anaphase. What happens in the anaphase? The spindle fibers attach to the chromosomes and pull the sister chromatids apart. So the spindle fibers in the anaphase, the sister fibers are attached to the chromosomes and they are pulling the sister chromatids apart. The fourth phase is the telophase. In the telophase, the chromosome decondense the nuclear material, reforms, and two daughter cells with a diploid number, that is 46 number of chromosomes are formed. Now, if there is any abnormality in any of the phase, or especially during the NF phase, during the uh, separation, then uh, the genetic diseases are very commonly seen. So genetic disorders can be due to abnormal replication of the chromosome or abnormal separation of these chromosomes, the chromatids and the genes are present on the chromatids. So in both the conditions, the genetic diseases are formed. Now <clears throat> we come to the meiosis. Meiosis again has the four phases as we have discussed above. We have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase with the same thing that is happening in the prophase. <clears throat> but the difference from the mitosis in the following ways is, it consists of two separate cell division. So, uh, in the uh, mitosis, there was one uh, separate cell division, whereas in uh, meiosis, there are two separate cell divisions that are known as meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. The reduction, there is reduction in the number of chromosomes uh, from the diploid to the haploid variety. That is, from the uh, <clears throat> 46, we are going to the 23 number of chromosomes. Now, it reduces the chromosome number from the diploid to the haploid via a tetraploid stage. So there is also a tetraploid stage that is responsible for the reduction of the chromosomes to half the number. This reduction of the haploid number occurs at the end of meiosis 1. So this reduction and the reduction that is happening in the haploid cells, it is occurring at the end of the meiosis 2. Now what are constitutional genetic diseases? Constitutional genetic diseases are the familial diseases that is caused by the constitutional mutation. Since we have seen the different type of cell division, now if there is any, any abnormality that uh, is remaining in the genes uh, due to the uh, abnormal multiplication of the chromosomes or due to abnormal separation, then such diseases are going to transfer in the families. All right. So these are known as the familial genetic diseases that are caused by the constitutional mutation, which are inherited through the germline. So through this germline, the and diseases are inherited from generation to generation. Now, the pattern of the disease inheritance can be of three types. All right. So, what are the different type of uh, patterns of the disease inheritance? It can be of three types. We have autosomal dominant inheritance. We have autosomal recessive inheritance, and we have X-linked inheritance. So, we all know that <clears throat> we have in the uh, chromosomes, or in, we have uh, autosomal. Uh, genes and we have X-linked genes. So if it is related to the autosomal uh, variety, then the disease are known as autosomal disease. And if these are related to the X-linked variety, the uh, diseases are known as uh, sexually linked disease. Then in the autosomal, we have uh, the variety of two types, autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive. So the pattern of this uh, disease inheritance are of three types. We have autosomal dominant, autosomal inheritance, and the autosomal, uh, sorry, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and the X-linked inheritance. Now, what are somatic genetic diseases? Next variety is the somatic genetic disease. Somatic mutations are not inherited. All right. So the somatic mutations are usually not inherited, but in instead it occurs during the post-zygotic uh, mitotic cell division. 
So what is happening in these somatic cell diseases? These are not inherited from the uh, other generation, but what is happening is there is a deficient mutation during the zygotic phase, during the pregnancy. So there is a deficient or abnormal post-zygotic mitotic cell division at any point of the embryonic life or embryonic development to the late adult life. So if there is any mutation in the gene after the conception, uh, before uh, after the conception, initially there was no changes in the gene, but due to certain abnormalities, certain problems, uh, the mitotic cell division is not proper and this will be leading to the development of somatic genetic diseases. So this is the most important example of human disease that is caused by the uh, somatic mutation is the cancer. So what is happening in cancer? Cancer is not inborn, but it is developing later in later part of life due to the uh, mutations of certain genes after conception. So this is all about the introduction to the genetic factors. Now, uh, I must say to you that you should go and check for your previous year's books for the uh, different type of cell divisions, how the genes separations are taking place. You also have a chapter in, in the Davidson book in which all these things are clearly explained. So you can also refer your book and also the e-notes that I have uh, provided to you so that uh, you can easily understand what is happening in the genetic diseases. All right, so this was all for today. In the next session, we will be uh, studying about the uh, different type of the genetic diseases. So this was all for today. This session is powered by Digital Version 2.0, Jyoti Vidya Performance University. I hope you must have understood the session properly. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve it. So this was all for today. Thank you very much. Have a good day.